Yeah, absolutely. I think that it was the timing was perfect on the record. Really? What's this fuss about? This <laughs> oh fuss God! About? What's happening? <laughs> oh well, there we go. What's going on here, huh? That's how you. That's how you make a dramatic entrance. <laughs> oh. Jack Wood, and I'm reporting for Enemies in Conversation series, and I'm talking to Sam from Greta Van Fleet, and we're expecting Josh, right? We're expecting Josh at some point. Theoretically. Well, the new album, uh, The Battle at Gardens Gate, is your second album after, obviously, an anthem of a peaceful army. And it's the second, it's, I mean, that album has such a cr- great critical acclaim. You've won a Grammy Award. Was there any nervousness for releasing this second album not even a little bit no um i think that's just because uh we felt like we were evolving and we felt we were getting kind of uh too far in our own direction to have other people steering our ship for us um so i think it was really liberating and uh it felt like a free album like we can we can really do whatever we want we are free we are we possess the ability to create whatever we want in this space and i think we knew exactly what we were going to do we were going to make a album that's big and unfuckwithable <laughs> uh, you, right you can't you can't really say anything about the bell at gardens gate that uh you know would draw negative comparisons to say led zeppelin or you just draw anything i think it's 110 percent greta van fleet and i think this is kind of uh in a lot of ways, our coming of age record. Would you say this? So this is more Greta Van Fleet than anything else that's been released? I would say so, yeah. Wow. And in a few different interviews, you described it as like a cinematic experience. It's like an expanse. Uh, what do you mean by that? Well, I think it's really, bottom line, it's kind of like the soundtrack to a movie that just hasn't been made yet. The album itself is the movie. Oh, wow. um, that is kind of the cinematic aspect of the whole thing. We went into this record thinking we want to make something that's widescreen because that's our favorite stuff, like the the Hans Zimmer and the Ennio Morricone and John Williams and everything in between. Uh, mm-hmm. But cinema is just the biggest sound, and we've always been such a big fan of that. So has there been any like films you'd say that could have inspired this album? Absolutely. Yeah. I think that a lot of Westerns, especially the good, the bad and the ugly 2001 a space odyssey. Um, yeah, I, th- I think this, uh, record is actually very inspired by film. I think it's, uh, inspired by a lot of kind of, kind of perhaps futuristic ending movies. I don't, <laughs> I don't want to say sci-fi, but, uh, it's, it's, it does have a dystopian element to it. This, latest album it does seem to be like we're all in this together and we've got to kind of do what we can there's a lot of hope but there's a lot of sort of fear in the album i'd say yeah i think that's ex- i think that's exactly it i think we really have to go to the very end of the world to really explain to people and show people like what that is and why we should be afraid of it and why we should be careful always as a society moving forward and well, in a way, that's so strange then that it's dropped, of all the times you could have dropped an album like that, you drop it in the midst of a pandemic. I mean, you were writing it, I believe, did you start writing in 2019? Yeah, it was, it was, it was before that uh, anything, any of this kicked in. It was probably, we started probably recording a year before the pandemic took control. But yeah, it feels so at home in like nearly describing what we're all feeling right now, which is that we are so far apart yet so... Um, together connected in a way yeah absolutely i think that it was the timing was perfect on the record really What's this about? What's <laughs> oh <fuss> god about? <laughs> What's happening? oh well there we go What's going on here huh that's how you that's how you make a dramatic entrance <laughs> oh there we go josh thank you so much for uh for joining yes well thank you for having me uh it's good to be here <laughs> it's good to be here <laughs> <laughs> right <laughs> Oh, well, we were just talking about how um, the album is inspired by cinema. Are there any particular films you'd say that would uh, have inspired the album for you? 
Probably quite a bit on some kind of subconscious level, but nothing really in the, nothing in the forefront of my mind. I think we just kind of wanted to score a movie. And I think the movie kind of ended up being the battle at Garden's Gate is kind of the way we look at it. But uh, this, I mean, Kubrick had a big influence. I love that sort of obsessive symmetry and that lens and, um, and some of it, so that's kind of what the visual of it, kind of thinking of that world was. And there is a bit of science fiction elements to it, which I'm sure Jake would attack me for saying. Yeah, I know. I was trying to be, I was trying to be careful with that. <laughs> but sure, it's kind of like, you know, it's, it, it, it's there a little bit. Um, yeah, I don't know. Just, I think, and I'm an absolute Kubrick freak. So I think probably boring from a lot of that stuff. But ultimately, no, I think it just kind of was this vision that we would make. Uh, sort of a world, a bit of a world. So we did some world building, but that only started to happen probably in, uh, midway through writing the album because it was kind of a groundwork was laid and we knew where we were going. I think it's one of those more. situations where the music kind of tells you, you kind of find the music and then that all, then you know what you're working with. Yeah, I mean, it's quite a dramatic start to the album with Heat Above, uh, which we've obviously heard for a while now as one of the singles. It's incredible. What I like most is that it seems to have a connection to the last album because you mentioned once more uh, there's a is a peaceful army joining the band. Is this a continuation? You wanted it to be like nearly like a follow through from album one. Yeah, there it is a bit of an extension or of an a, an evolution of the anthem of the peaceful army. I think we're expanding or evolving on that that world a little bit, and it does kind of exist as some sort of like parallel universe, so that we can kind of use that that. Uh, platform to um, create illusions and, and, and toy with concepts. You know, there's a lot of um, analogies and symbology. And, and so I think that was the platform that we kind of tried to create. Um, and that's, that's just, it, I think, and then of course, this is a much, uh, much more adult like uh, album. I think it's kind of, there's a bit of death of innocence inside of, of the album. It's a bit heavier. Um, so it's like there is then this peaceful army and then it's time to go to to war kind of in a way. And so then you play with themes like war and then it's war of a religion, war of industry, industry of war and so on and so on. Yeah, you mentioned religion. I mean, was it a conscious decision to kind of start the album with quite a biblical organ sound? Like it's quite dramatic to go straight and be like, look, this is it. This is our statement. Or was that just something that happened to happen? I think it kind of just happened. That was some the heat above was something a song we'd written five years ago. Oh wow! So it we just didn't we didn't think it suited the essence of the the previous albums. So it was most appropriate when we when we sort of pulled it off the shelf and dusted it off a bit for this album. And that intro was there, you know, and uh, we, I think after just sort of starting to put the album together and having our tracks down that we were arranging, we thought, well, that would be a perfect intro because it's almost like it's just traveling through time and space right through the middle eye into the <laughs> gate, boom, opening up the world. You take, you remove a lot of the foreplay and get right yeah, to it. I think heat above really is kind of the definition of a first track. Uh, a kind of a, the defining of an album. Mm. It's kind of like the finale at the beginning. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's, it's cyclical in nature than the album in a way then. So it's constantly on a loop, in that, which is a beautiful thing to happen. You performed uh, here above recently on, was it the Colbert Late Show? And yeah, that's, up on your, that's up on your YouTube. I have to say, it's stunning outfit, guys. Stunning outfits. The, <laughs> I'm still the wearing it. <laughs> yeah, there's a lot of white imagery, but the white jumps that you were wearing on that, Josh, was yeah. incredible. Was that a worry when you were going to the bathroom at any point? That <laughs> well, things you know, could go wrong? <laughs> drinking yeah. your red wine? Yeah, so drinking <laughs> red wine in the dressing room is probably the, the yeah, you want to give a, the stylist a heart attack. That's how you do it. <laughs> it's very entertaining. And then you run around the room and they chase after you and you laugh like a little girl. It's good. <laughs> It's no. it's you need a catheter. Beautiful. If you're going to wear a jumpsuit, you need a catheter. No. <laughs> uh, it zips in the back. So anyway, it's fun imagery. No, I it, white was kind of that we wanted. I think just there was something angelic about the song and, and, and it just seemed pristine, you know, in a way. And, and, it, and it was, it was kind of clean. It was, it was like a newborn or something, like an infant. So we thought, well, that would be really good to just kind of go that route, you know? Um, and also at that moment, we really felt that we were coming into a new age. Uh, yeah. We had a change of 
office, we had a uh, bright outlook uh, moving forward in this pandemic uh, that's happening. And uh, we really wanted to show rebirth and to be born again and to, you know, take all the mistakes that we've learned and moving forward, we have this clean white palette to work with. Mm-hmm. Oh, I yeah. love a good metaphor. And this is powerful stuff, guys. <laughs> and you also have your own, like, I mean, is it rock and roll to have your own candle as well uh, called uh, The Heat Above, which is lovely. What's the scent <laughs> of that candle? Yes. Of course. Uh, it smells like Josh. No. <laughs> I didn't choose the scent of the can. I don't think any of us did. <laughs> what would have been the scent to represent the album then? I don't know, something rather earthy, probably, like patchouli. It would be kind of, it's a bit of a stench to it, you know. <laughs> frankincense like and gold. Like yeah, right. yeah, it would be a frankincense <laughs> and gold. I like that. Some myrrh, some myrrh in there. So you're writing this album. Um, it, well, it sounds like you've had this stuff penned for a long time, but like, I know that you went for Age of the Machine, which is a really powerful, hard-hitting tune. You actually wrote that, did you go like away into like some cabin in some woods to write that? That's actually exactly what we did. We did for that yeah. track, yes. Uh-huh. Yeah, Age of Machine was written pretty quickly too, within a few days for such a uh, extensive song. Extensive song and a, arranged in a very complex way. We we tried a lot of different stuff with the track, but we landed on something that was very, very different, and that's why we all uh, loved it so much. And also, it metaphorically brings you into this light and this hope on the chorus. Some people call it a bridge because it comes so deep into the song yeah uh, call it whatever you want it but i think it also is the story it tells the story and it is the story i know that you guys are quite into philosophy and things like that it's a bit matrix it's a bit like plato's cave theory like the shadows on the wall is that what you like trying to take mm-hmm. down like talk about society in a way do you feel like technology is too present at the moment yeah i mean it was t- certainly dystopian and it is borrowing from a lot of that you know probably pretty early stuff um but it, i think kind of a lot of the like orwellian or huxley or those kind of worlds i think for for certain you know um but yeah it's really just uh, tackling this this idea that that we as a human race are in an age of automation it's, it's a very technological uh world that's constantly becoming or rapidly becoming more and more technological. It's kind of wild, but that's what there's this sort of this moment in time where they were like, oh, okay, so this is definitively some kind of technological revolution that's going on. Things are going to change. And uh, then you start seeing younger people who are plugged into this sort of this a lot. Uh, I mean, there's some sort of, I don't want to say death of identity, but there's some sort of the concern of losing uh, original thought you know and um that kind of thing that's concerned so then of course there's the chorus which sort of breaks it open and says that, that you know being um trapped or attached to permanently anything is kind of an illusion and that you can break free of that and unplug from the source so it's kind of there's some hope so sort of in in that song so do you guys as a band that you never glued onto your phones is that not something that you lot have ever been interested in in any way phones i loathe Really? And I'm so quite terrible. You- and I'm quite terrible with it. Generally, I mean, I do have my phone now, which is great. Yeah. But uh, that's very rare that that's the case. I thought I'd be transparent about that. <laughs> so you've never got, like, addicted to any app or anything like that? Have you, have you ever ventured into, like, TikTok or anything? You're, like, you're aware of these things? No. <laughs> <laughs> no. I honestly don't really know what that is. I, I kind of got to have an idea, but I don't know how it functions. You know? For the first time, I think I feel old because I have no <laughs> fucking idea what this is. And I always knew what everything was. We were, we were always hip enough. <laughs> I, I don't know. I don't know. We just never listened to popular music. I think it's hard to use the word hip and still sound young as well. So like, we've made our first failure there. I know what you mean. Like I've been on TikTok and weirdly in the UK, TikTok has led to, we, did you guys get the sea shanty craze over there at all? No, no probably I not. wish that we got that. That sounds that good. Sounds, yeah. So, Where would we be all about that? Well, basically this uh, postman in the UK uh, started doing sea shanties. He now has quit his job as a postman as he got a number one single from TikTok. So, I mean, the machines, they're against us, but you can work with them in a strange exactly. way. 
And it's just sort of like the, the innovation of medical technology is insane and, and very useful. It's again, yeah, I think you're very right. It's just how we use it. Yeah, it's so. very much a warning as to moving forward. We have this massive opportunity, but with something that's so young, like the internet, we just don't have it figured out yet. But it was, I suppose it was, we never will because it's, it's, it, I feel the world constantly changes and people constantly change with it. And then the technology changes along with that. I think it just will keep, I think we'll keep fumbling through Alan Watts. So it, it, it was listening to some lecture and he was talking about how <clears throat> there's no perfect arrival that nobody arrives because then there's the death of evolution. Once you've arrived, you, there's the end all. Um, so I think things will constantly just change and change and change. And we'll, as he says, fumble through time, just fumble mm. through. It's kind of what Trip the Light Fantastic was about, really. Oh, it's yeah. That, that's, that's something that's, that tune's got so much like philosophical little bits dribble through it. It's, it's incredible. I feel like I've got a short degree from listening to it. It's, it's a strange song. It's very yeah, strange. It's a fun <laughs> song, though. But speaking of all this technology, like it must be strange for you guys to have this new album and not do what you'd normally do as a band, which is to go out, do all these press junkets, to go on radio stations and things like that. And instead you're doing it all from like your management's office. And there's like, is there a tour coming up? Like, is it strange to have to deal with this pandemic in a way that you're having to come about this album completely differently? Well, we've had to get a lot more creative right. <laughs> uh, about how to deliver this kind of energy and this feeling that we have uh, to substitute some kind of live performance. We're not trying to recreate the live performance and we will not try to recreate that, but I think it's all about getting a little bit more creative and really trying to quench people's uh, uh, desire to go back out and do that stuff. And it's trying to be personal too, you know? It's like trying to really be as personal or communicative as possible in a, in a, in a hopefully very honest and organic way, you know? And then of course that is a challenge. So it's like Sam said, trying to be very creative about how we achieve that. You know? well, can and hopefully not be pretentious in attempting to do it. You <laughs> yeah. know? Well, you've done some really cool things. Like you've also got um, a range of tattoos for this new album, which I've not seen come around with it anymore. Did you guys go for the tattoos yourself? <laughs> yeah. Yep. Yes, we did. Uh -huh. Yeah. Are you proud? <laughs> Can we see them? Well, oh, they're gone they're, by now. They're, they're, they're gone. Yeah. They were those ones that you get from sweets, aren't they? That you just stick on and rubbed off. <laughs> <laughs> there are places that you just, you know, you just would be inappropriate to expose on camera. <laughs> yeah, we can't put this on the internet. We have to put an age rating <laughs> on this video. Um, <laughs> but in terms of tour, what's the plan for touring for Greta Van Fleet then? Touring, we yeah. have some strong prospects moving forward. I think that I keep hearing a lot that this fall is uh, we're looking at very possible stuff. But before that, I think we're also looking at things that are socially distanced, kind of, you know, the pods. I think everybody's seen pictures yeah, of what, wild. what like it looks flaming, like. Like Flaming Lips did so, uh, a gig in Zorbs. Is that what you're looking into? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Much. <laughs> I mean, that's that's what uh, that's what the talks in the back rooms of the the. the the business offices, the record execs, all of that, that. These fifty first floor guys in suits are murmuring in each other's ears. Pods. <laughs> it seems like it's brilliant. No, I think I think probably this summer it seems pretty safe to assume there'll be some shows that are socially distanced, and hopefully uh, by fall we're looking. Uh, everybody's looking in a, in good shape, you know, to be doing more of what touring used to be. You know, the album was written last year, so you've sort of been sat on it a little bit. So what have you been doing in this strange pandemic time for a band that has been constantly on the road? What have you been doing to fill your time suddenly? We had to postpone the album because, you know, I mean, the world changed overnight. But, um, yeah, most of it was written before last year. So we were able to incorporate two more tracks onto the album over the course of 2020. Uh, which is what we wanted to have a 12 song album and with touring it looked like there'd only be time for or to fit in 10 tracks in the studio. what were those two additional songs by the way which were yeah, caravel and the barbarians those are the two and it was given those were written in 2020 we thought well, yeah that belongs perfectly in the universe of this album so we went in and did that we took it we got in a we got in a, a in a in an rv and we took it across the country we went from nashville to los angeles and that was really strange, you know, it's kind of definitely my way soon and just finished up the album. And 
yeah, so that was interesting. A little adventure. Um, so that's kind of the stuff we've been doing. I, I think we've been keeping ra- rather busy. We've been playing the hell out of the album and, and just writing new stuff and obviously not two people. <laughs> but uh, we look forward to doing it when we can, I guess. Do you, so you feel tour ready if you've been playing this album through a lot? Do you feel like it's ready to get out there for audiences as soon as you can? I think so. I mean, yeah, it's, I think we feel pretty confident about it. Everybody's playing every instrument with every limb. You know, it's good. It's a very <laughs> task. It's a very difficult uh, album to translate to the live setting. Because it's so, there's such a lot of space in each song, if you get what I mean. Like sonically, it seems a lot bigger than anything you've previously done. Yeah, it's been a creative challenge to, to play it live, but it's been pretty good, you know. Can we touch on the fact that The Barbarians was written like one of your most recent songs? Because there's some lyrics in that I really want to know a bit more detail about because I've sort of interpreted this in a political way. And this could be totally wrong, but Funeral of Innocence, painted up in red, dressed in lead, to me, seem like a little bit of a nod to maybe the Republican Party. And is that just me having a guess or is that something you were thinking? I mean, that's an interesting interpretation. No, that wasn't the intention when I was writing that. I think it was sort of uh, blood of innocence, you know, dressed in red. That's sort yeah. of that kind of thing, the, the death of innocence. Yeah, sure. But you can look at it as, <laughs> you can also look at it as, uh, as, as Russia, you know, years ago too, or the, you know, who knows what, right? It's kind of interesting, you know, it's a bit of a vague line. Yeah. Well, you guys I like got, that interpretation, it's interesting. Yeah, well, that's, that's what, because I thought you guys got a little bit political recently. I saw it on your Instagram. Um, <laughs> <laughs> can we just uh, explain that picture a little bit, can we? Yeah. The reason why the bums are out. Yeah, we thought we'd do something cheeky. No, I think if somebody <laughs> says, drop your pants, it'll be iconic. And then we laughed. And then before you know it, it was really interesting. You just have to make sure that there wasn't an RV full of, we were at uh, Idlewild, you know, when we were doing that shoot. And uh, there were families in RVs that would come around the corner, you know, we'd have to kind of go, as the comes clear, you know, and you guys, there's somebody, you know, like dad driving the RV, look kids, there's the locals, you know. <laughs> Well, I have to say, Greta Van Fleet as a band, lovely bums. Um, <laughs> and it's a, it's a lovely little caption. Don't be an ass, vote. So I think, you know what? You've done your bit for society there. You don't need to release the album. Vote for. We're just telling them to vote, you know? I think this is the tour poster, really. I think this will bring in the crowds. I'm not going to lie. <laughs> I, 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 yeah, I printed out. I saw, it's on my wall in my room, just for me. <laughs> I'm sure somebody's done that, right? Full blown Thank up. Thank goodness. We spent a long time. Yeah, you know, we're not going to, those asses aren't going to look like that, you know, years from now. So I don't know, maybe, maybe when we're like fat and relevant, we can recreate that. that, that photo. Uh, the, the before and after shot. Uh, yeah. And speaking of like irrelevance and stuff, like I don't think you see this, but every time Gene Simmons seems to open his mouth, he <laughs> seems to say rock music is dead. Like you're probably sick of hearing this, sick of fighting the fight. But what, what you got to say about this? Maybe the world of rock he remembers is dead. I don't know. Mm. I think rock and roll is a very elastic genre. It's a very eclectic genre. And it seems like every gen- every once in a while, a generation reinterprets what that is. And I've heard a lot, you know, throughout the years, of, I guess, people blowing hot air about. I think rock and roll can become dormant, but it, it, you can't kill something like that, that sort of supersedes time. You know, it's an attitude and a spirit and a celebration. And so I, I don't know. I think people pass the torch and, and time rolls on. And I, I think there's probably a lot of people that would disagree with him. You know, mm. Elton John is one, I'm certain. I mean, I've heard it come out of his mouth. Well, trust know. Elton John more. <laughs> I do too, you know. <laughs> you got to trust Elton John. You got to trust the man. I mean, uh, you've, had a, you've had a lot of like famous fans and obviously like, probably the albatross around your neck has been the comparisons to Led Zeppelin so constantly. I mean, I'm sure it's meant in a lovely way and it is astounding. But have you heard Robert Plant's opinion on you guys before? Well, I don't know, through the grapevine, I hear that he really does kind of appreciate what we're doing, you know? I'd like to sit down and have a chat with him, you know? But um... You can make that happen. He actually, I saw in an interview, I think it was 2018, he said, you guys are so annoyingly talented. And Josh in particular, he hates you because of your voice. It's, it's, it's not fair. So it's nice to have a little bit of hate from a rock and roll legend, I'd say. 
<laughs> I would, I would think so. Yeah. Sweet. No, he's lovely, you know? Um, mm. And yeah, he's, he's, it's been an, he's been an influence, but uh, you know, I think amongst many others, you know, I, I think Aretha Franklin is a big one and Sam and Dave and Wilson Pickett is a huge one and even Joe Cocker and stuff like that. So I, yeah, but he fits in perfectly and he's, he's, he, he was doing something very different, you know, and, and kind of broke things wide open in, in the, it was, it was powerful and unique and uh, acrobatic in a way. Yeah. I mean, you, you've got to channel some of that on stage. Clearly it has to be done. That bare chest energy. You need it sometimes. Yeah, you do. <laughs> But who, who else has been an influence on this album in particular, maybe not on the other albums? I think, I don't know, I almost should, but... You would see, well, that's that's a really good question because we kind of abandoned this kind of conscious idea of consciously being inspired by someone. And that's kind of why I say that it's our coming-of-age album is because this one's like... Abandoned Greta Van Fleet. Fleet. That's right. Yeah, this, just is, go this is a Greta Van Fleet night. album. I really feel that it's difficult to say, that, uh, perhaps little Pink Floyd or... Uh, yeah, you can hear say, things in there. Yeah, that probably but, will. but I, would, I would certainly say that this is uh, moreover a Greta Van Fleet album. Well, it, it certainly sounds that way. And it's one thing I read in an interview because I had no idea you guys knew about it, but you said one of the collaborations you'd love to do would be with Florence and the Machine. I love them. <laughs> like, 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 how did you first stumble upon Florence and the Machine and why, out of all the people, would you want to collaborate with Florence? Well, I love her voice and I, I love her presence on stage. And I, I think that that's another good example of why, you know, rock and roll isn't dead because there's something really unique and honest uh, and raw, you know, and that, that uh, they're channeling. And, and as far as the live performance is concerned, it's, it's all live music. Those are, those are great musicians and a great live rock and roll act. Um, and that's another, you know, you see that, you go, yeah, see, there's, there's, there's one of the good reasons why rock and roll isn't dead, you know? And um, yeah, and some of the, at least hearing some of the, their influences or, or uh, her influences, it's kind of really interesting. There's a lot of rock and roll stuff going on there. So I don't know. I think it's, it's, it's a pretty incredible band. And I, I don't know. I think we could create some good stuff together, you know? <laughs> I think you should make it happen. And before we wrap all this up, I've kept you for so long. I'm so sorry. I, I've just got to know like how it feels to have an album that you've said was born from your travels, from seeing the world, from the influences of that, um, actually be released in such a just position way where no one can see any of the world right now. We're all sort of stuck in a hub. Is that, a strange situation to release that album into. Yeah, I, I think so. I thought there was an irony to the whole thing, you know, uh, especially My Way Soon. It was written before it, 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 it even this was even uh, this pandemic situation was uh, cons even a considerable thought. But yeah, I think it, the album coming out now is, seems rather appropriate because I feel and I'm seeing that the world is being slowly vaccinated and that things are slowly coming back to um, back to uh, some normality. So I think hopefully the album does get to carry us through into uh, the, the next era or the next time and in, in, in people can get out and, you know, be together. So yeah. I mean, hopefully that's a vehicle anyway. I don't know. Well, you said on My Way Soon, um, you felt that that was a big key part of the album. Um, but that's the first song you've sort of written that seems to be the most personal. It's, it's the first first person written song you've done for Greta Van Fleet. Like, how come that's the song you wanted to first put your this is me sort of stamp on it? Well, we did say, we, we kind of stepped back for a bit. We, we toured for three straight years. We just took a little bit of time, I think, right at the end of 2019 and it was kind of i guess we were still we were working on the album we were working on stuff and i just kind of got nostalgic and started thinking about all of those things you know once once time stops to stand still a bit you can meditate or process some shit so that's great right and then it's sort of okay well that's what this is what this song sounds like to me and uh usually it's sort of like we've got the instrumentation together the vocal melody is there and sort of like well what is this song saying you know i'm opening myself up to it and then that's kind of what sort of crashed over me like a wave so i, I kind of started jotting that down and i 
I wrote the lyrics a bit before I sang the song on the album, you know, that's kind of a lot of the time I, and it's like, ah, I've got to write lyrics for this. Okay. Da, 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 and go, you know? So that's, I guess that's kind of what it, it what just sounded like to me was all of the, all of those experiences, those really kind of insane and intense situations. Yeah. It, it does sound like the most, like you, you process so many things and put it into a song on that one. And I have to say, on the album as a whole, I think it's some of your finest vocal work you've ever done. Some of your whoa's blew my mind. Like, I can't believe that you've spent this whole conversation and haven't sang something at me. Because if I had a voice like you, I'd be going like, do you want a big oh? Like that all the time. <laughs> like, how, how did you first know that you could sing like that? Uh, I don't know. I think it's something I kind of developed. I mean, in the beginning, we were really doing blue stuff. It was a lot of really blues rock and roll. And so I, I suppose it probably sounded a little bit more like Joe Cocker or something, but we just have um, to talk low and mumble. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I can do that. So I'm like Hunter Thompson, but I, 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 uh, I think that um, it was just like blown my voice out so many times and probably done so much damage to it really. But uh, it, I, I think I figured it out. It's taken, you know, a couple of years. Uh, it came pretty quick, but I was really serious about it. You know, I just wanted to be able to do something. And I realized I was, I was having much more luck in the higher range. So I would do that kind of stuff. And then I was listening to Aretha Franklin and going, okay, what's this that we should, I should do that, you know? So you, um, learn, you learn how to sing sort of from listening to Aretha Franklin. That's incredible. It's a big part of it. If I can go on, if I'm just warming up before I, you know, we go on stage in front of thousands of people and I can at least sing with Aretha a little bit, then I feel really comfortable. So it's kind of almost like a protector force in a way. I really like, like what she did. She's wonderful rock and roll music too. There's another good reason why that genre is so strange. She fits so perfectly into that, that, that world, but uh, isn't thought of traditionally as, you know, that kind of thing. But You can totally hear it. Now you've said it, you can be like, oh yeah, obviously that's all over the album. Uh, but like you said, it is the most Greta Van Fleet album. I think, do you know what? Uh, the battle, the battle uh, at Garden's Gate is one of the most hopeful sounding albums I've heard for a long time. I think there's a lot of dystopian in there, but it's the ultimate running theme I find is hope. And is that what you guys wanted to bring across for the album? I hope. think so. Hope over everything. Yeah, it's a resilience of the human spirit inside of this crazy, you know, <laughs> on this pale blue dot. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think that's the perfect uh, time to end. So thank you so much, uh, Josh and Sam, for your time. I really appreciate it. Um, and hopefully catch you on tour very soon. Yeah, likewise. We'll Thank see you. you there. Yeah, nice one. Yeah, I'll be down at the front singing some Aretha. Don't you worry. <laughs> I'll be singing with you. Yeah.